A few days ago, you may have heard of the plane that crashed for 2,000 meters and one of the passengers on board died. Every newspaper, us too in our magazine, reported this news incorrectly because it is not true that the plane dropped sharply for 2,000 meters. And it's not us saying this, but the data. Flight data are available on Flight Radar, a site that shows air traffic data of world flights in real time, including those mentioned in the news. Obviously, the data can sometimes be a bit complex to read. In fact, we were only able to clarify things after the site published details from the first investigations. Before we look at the data, let's do a brief recap of what happened for those who haven't followed the news. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. While we were editing this video, news emerged of another turbulence incident, this time affecting a flight from Doha to Dublin. There were several injuries on board, but we don't have much information on this yet so I won't to go into detail for now. However, be aware that such strong turbulence occurs very rarely. In fact, every day thousands of planes take off around the world and such strong turbulence can truly be counted on one hand. And even rarer are turbulences where there are injuries or even fatalities. So let's talk about turbulences and about what happened on the flight to Singapore. Let me say that if you have upcoming air travel plans, there's no need to get carried away and panic. There's nothing to worry about. The main character of this story is Singapore Airlines flight SQ321. The Boeing 777-300ER departed from London to Singapore on Monday, May 20 at 11.38 p.m. with 230 passengers on board. In the early morning hours of the journey, nothing significant happened, but once the plane flew over the Andaman Sea, the first significant turbulences began. You might say, well, nothing unusual. Turbulence is a relatively common phenomenon when traveling by plane. This is indeed true, but the turbulence that hit this aircraft was exceptionally violent, causing a lot of chaos on board. The passengers who didn't have their seatbelts fastened at that moment were thrown from one side of the plane to the other, amidst plates, cutlery and food scraps that flew everywhere. Given the conditions, the pilot sent an emergency signal and chose for an emergency landing at Bangkok Airport in Thailand, where several ambulances were already there to provide first aid. Unfortunately, a 73 years old British citizen on board lost his life and at least 54 passengers were injured. But let's look at what happened from a technical scientific perspective. To understand what happened, we can first look at this graphic where the blue line shows us how the plane's altitude varied during the journey. So here is where it departed from London, takes off, travels, 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 and at a certain point starts to slightly descend. So the first time the data initially arrived, it was interpreted as a sharp descent of approximately 2,000 meters that would have caused all those significant inconveniences and disruptions on board the aircraft, while this second part was seen as the actual emergency descent towards the city of Bangkok. Actually, it didn't really happen that way. In fact, this first part, this area here, is part of the descent, the emergency descent towards Thailand. While the turbulence occurred here, here is a tiny dot where the turbulence happened. By the way, this descent value seems abrupt, but it is not abnormal. In fact, now I will show you another altitude graphic taken from another flight that was on the same route. If we look here, we see that during the landing phase, in this case a normal landing, the slope is essentially the same. So even in the case of the emergency landing, there is no abnormal data, and the only turbulence was in that small peak that I showed you. But now let's look at it zoomed in so we have a clearer idea. This is the turbulence seen in extremely great detail, which was later published by Flight Radar In-Depth Analysis. The blue line we see represents the altitude and is essentially fixed at approximately 37,000 feet, which is roughly about 11,200 meters. The plane goes on and on, and here, in this section, we can see where the real turbulence happened. The plane goes on and on, then at a certain point it descends, then ascends, then descends, ascends, descends, ascends again, and then stabilizes at 37,000 feet before starting the actual descent towards Bangkok. In all of this, the height, meaning the difference between the maximum altitude reached and the starting altitude, is about 150 meters, not more. So, we are not talking about nearly 2,000 meters, 
but 150 meters. So we agree that indeed, even though the difference in altitude was smaller than initially reported, it was super violent. This gray line indicates how the plane's vertical speed changed. So we can essentially see that there are some very, very steep points here, 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 and here. And consider that right in this segment, in approximately about 9 seconds or so, there was a speed change of 60 km per hour, so it was incredibly intense. So each of these peaks corresponded directly to a strong jolt on the plane, which unfortunately, as we have seen, caused one fatality and dozens of injuries. However, now that we have clarified a bit what happened from a technical point of view, let's also understand what causes such turbulence. Usually a turbulence, as the name suggests, occurs in turbulent air conditions, it is to say when the air does not behave linearly but chaotically moves. When the aircraft enters or exits one of these zones, there can be more or less violent jolts. In particular, the flight from London to Singapore appears to have been affected not by just any turbulence, but by a so-called CAT, or clear air turbulence, which is a sudden turbulent movement of air masses in areas that are cloud-free, making them extremely difficult to identify on the weather radar. These phenomena are generally usually present above 4,500 meters and are associated with jet streams. Jet streams can be imagined as rivers of air flowing at high altitudes, moving in a zigzag pattern with variable speeds ranging from 80 to 450 kilometers per hour. Here, at the edges of these currents, cat phenomena can occur, and one of these phenomena is believed to have affected flight SQ321. This is indeed a plausible hypothesis, of course, but it has not yet been officially confirmed. We will have the official confirmation at the end of the investigations. Before we say goodbye, I wanted to explain one last aspect. That is, what happens to passengers who are on board a plane during turbulence? The main problem in these cases is that when a plane encounters turbulence, everything inside it, if not secured, starts to move around violently. Let me explain. Imagine being on a plane and suddenly encountering turbulence. If you have your seatbelt fastened, you are anchored to the plane. So, you feel the jolt, but you remain firmly in your seat. If you're not wearing a seatbelt and the plane suddenly goes up and down, you risk hitting the overhead locker violently, injuring yourself. Well, then it would be enough to just keep the seatbelt sign on all the time, right? No, it's actually not that simple, you see. If so, that signal would lose some of its meaning because at some point it would be ignored. And when passengers should really fasten their seat belts, they wouldn't know. That said, our advice is to always keep your seat belts fastened to reduce any risks associated with turbulence. All right, guys, thanks for following me up to this point. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other curiosities about the world of airplanes, let me know in a comment. We'll see each other in the next video, always here on Geopop, science in everyday life.